In this video, I'm going to go over five different functions in Excel. The left, right, mid, find, and lend functions. These are five very important functions that I use all the time. They allow us to extract a smaller substring of text from a larger string of text. So let's take a look. So here we have a bunch of phone numbers. This is in the phone numbers worksheet in the file named left, right, mid, find, lend. And I provided a link to these files in the video description if you want to follow along. So let's come over here into cell B2. What do we want to do in B2? We want to extract the area code from A2. Okay, and the area code is the first three digits of the phone number. So in order to do that, we're going to use the left function. So let's begin by typing up the left function. And now the first argument is the text. What text are we referring to? Well, we're referring to cell A2. And now how many characters from the left do we want to extract? So that's going to be three. So let's come and copy this formula down. And now we have all of our area codes in column B. Now I'm going to show you the right function. So let's come over here to the city state zip worksheet. So in cell C2, we want to extract the zip code from B2. Well, the zip code is always going to be the last five characters of this text string. So we're going to use a write function. So let's come over here and let's begin by typing our write function. And now the text that we're referring to is cell B2 and the number of characters is going to be five because there's always five digits in an area code. So let's close our parentheses and let's hit enter. And now we have our zip code. So with the left function, you're extracting characters from the left side of the string. With the right function, you're extracting characters from the right side of the string. So obviously now, with the mid function, we're going to be extracting characters from the middle of the string. So let's go back into the worksheet called phone numbers, okay? Now let's suppose for some reason that we wanted to extract the middle three numbers within this phone number. Well, in order to do that, we're going to use the mid function. So let's come over here into cell C1 and let's create a header. And let's use the format painter to copy the format from B1. Now let's come into C2 and let's initiate our mid function. Now the first thing that it's asking us for is the text. So that's going to be A2. Now it's asking us for the start number. So in this particular case, the start number is going to be 5. Okay, why is it five? Well, the number that we want to start from is five characters into this string because the first four characters of this string are the area code followed by the dash. So the start number is going to be five. And now the number of characters is going to be three because it's asking us how many characters from this point do we want to extract, okay? Now let's close our parentheses and now you can see that it's extracting the middle three numbers which is 861 so let's copy this formula down and also let's use a format painter and that's how you use the mid function now let's look at the find function so let's come back into the city state zip worksheet now let's take a look at cell b2 let's suppose we wanted to figure out how many characters into this text string the comma appears well we can do that by using the find function and I'll show you what, what the whole point of even doing that is uh, later on in this video. But let's come over here into D1 and let's type up our header. Let's use a format painter as well. Okay, now let's come over here into D2 and let's initiate our find function. Okay, now it's asking us what text do we want to find, okay? Well, we want to find the comma. So let's put the commas in quotes. Now it's asking us within text, within what text do we want to find the comma? Well, that's going to be cell B2. And now the start number is optional. It's saying at what point of this uh, text do you want to start this function? But we could leave that blank. And now, as you can see, the comma appears 13 characters into this text string. So let's come over here and copy the formula down. And also, let's use a format painter to give it that blue background. Okay, now what the hell was the whole point of doing that? 
Well, let's suppose that we wanted to extract the city name from this entire text string. Well, we know that the city name is everything that's left of the comma, so we can combine a left function with the find function in order to extract the city name. So let's come over here into E1. Let's type up a header. Let's use the format painter. And now let's come into E2 and initiate our left function. Now it's asking us for the text. Okay, so the text is going to be cell B2. Now from how many characters to the left of this text string do we want to extract? Well, we want to extract everything that's left of the comma. And we know that the comma in this uh, case is 13 characters into this text. So let's choose D2 for the number of characters. Now let's close out our parentheses. Now something's going to be wrong. Watch. As you can see, it extracted not only the city name, but also the comma. So let's go back into our formula. And now where it says the number of characters, okay, let's say D2 minus 1, okay. And let's copy this formula down. And now we have all of the city names in column E. But now we have this column D in here, which looks kind of funny. So let's get rid of this. But wait, look what happens when we got rid of this. Now this formula is trying to reference a cell that doesn't even exist anymore. Okay, so let's get rid of these formulas. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a nested function. We're going to do a find function within a left function. So, so let me show you how this works. So now it's asking us for the text. That's still going to be B2. But for the number of characters, for that, we're going to use the find function, okay? So what text do we want to find? We want to find the comma, okay? And now it's asking us within text. Within what text do we want to find the comma? Well, that's going to be B2 still. And now let's close out our parentheses. But that's going to give us the number of characters where the comma starts. So we need to subtract one from that, okay? Now let's close out our left function. So let's copy this formula down to get all of the different city names. And that takes me to our last function of this video, which is the len function. So you can use the len function to tell you how many characters are in a specific string. So let's come over here into our worksheet called part number. Now in cell A2, we have a part number. Let's suppose that in cell B2, we wanted to figure out how many characters were, were in this part number. Okay, so let's type up the len function. Okay, and now it's asking us for the text. So that's going to be cell A2. And let's close our function. And that's pretty much it. So now this is telling us that there's nine characters in cell A2. Now, if you notice, all of these part numbers have the characters dash FTR at the end of them. So let's suppose that we wanted to strip these characters out. Well, the way we would do that is we would use a left function in combination with the len function. So, so let me show you how this works. So let's come back into B2 and let's clear out the formula and let's initiate our left function. Now the text is going to be cell A2. Now it's asking us for the number of characters. Well, the number of characters is going to be the entire length of cell A2 minus 4. So let's type up our len function. Okay. And now the text that we're referring to is cell A2. We close out of our len function. And now we're going to say minus 4. Let's close out our parentheses. And now we have the part number without the dash FTR. So let's copy this formula down. And now we have successfully implemented a nested left and len function.